This is Thought in Motion, a series dedicated to the seminars of psychoanalyst Jacques Lacan. Today's video covers Lecture 2 of Seminar 5. Freud's analysis of the word familiar in Jokes and the Unconscious demonstrates the central importance of the signifier in unconscious processes. Lacan finds it quite surprising that psychoanalysts, despite their profession being so focused on the use of speech, pay so little attention to the field of linguistics. Indeed, the key to understanding Freud's consideration of witticisms is how his analysis entails linguistic technique and structure. We focus too much on meanings, but ignore structural elements. And this harkens back to the distinction made between content and form in the previous video. Freud's names for these structural alterations are condensation and displacement. And these concepts are the focus of Lacan's lecture here. To begin, Lacan returns to the neologism familiar, placing it in its proper context, wherein the speaker who utters it first evokes God, stating, as true as God shall grant me all good things. So we can see how this utterance addresses the big other, an important element in our linguistic analysis. Next, we can see how the speaker evokes the little other, the object in the statement. In his saying, I was sitting next to Solomon Rothschild, totally like an equal. Lacan notes that the use of the word totally is used in a manner that belies an uncertainty for the speaker. Like when we say, I totally know everything will be okay. Of course, we don't know that. And our insertion of the word totally communicates that uncertainty clearly. But it's this uncertainty that's fundamental for the possibility of the witticism to work. Upon addressing these two figures, the big other and the little other, we then come upon the novel message, which includes a signifier not in the big other's code. Lacan notes that such a witticism can be elaborated and provides the example of le fat millionaire, which in French is translated to mean something like the conceited millionaire at least in the way Lacan is using it here. What's important is that we don't rush into matters of meaning and significance when it comes to these signifiers. Lacan writes, we mustn't understand too quickly because by understanding too quickly, we don't understand a thing. To not rush into meaning requires focusing on the signifier and its essential functions and creating meaning itself. Those functions are metonymy and metaphor, which have a close conceptual relationship with Freud's notions of displacement and condensation. For Lacan, signifiers form closed groups of articulated chains that link those signifiers together. He mentions two kinds of links. First, there are the more observable links of combination or contiguity. These links express the function of metonymy. These links are purely formal as they are defined in terms of their spatial and temporal combination among signifiers and have nothing to do with any content associated with them. It entails, for example, the sequencing of phonemes in a word and how those phonemes can be detached from one another. Second, there are the implicit links among signifiers through substitution. These links express the function of metaphor. Upon a decoupling of phonemes in metonymy, a new phoneme can come to substitute for another. One kind of substitution is condensation, wherein signifiers are compressed so as to produce a new signifier with an associated new meaning. This is what transpires in the case of the term familiar. Another example, one provided by Lacan in a previous seminar, is that of Boaz's sheaf, as expressed in the line, his sheaf was neither miserly nor hateful. The metaphor of the sheaf transfers onto the figure of Boaz in a way that a new meaning emerges in relation to this name. Lacan notes that this substitution process forms the basis for the progress of or the changes in language. He further elaborates that the possibility of substitution is what gives rise to the world of meaning and is the basis for the entire history of language. Lacan provides an example 
in the etymology and transformations of the French word attire. A modern translation will come up with it meaning to be appalled, dismayed, or filled with consternation. He then proposes the hypothetical situation in which this word has an earlier relationship with another word, abatu, meaning to be brought down, killed, or demoralized. He suggests that the meaning of the word abatu would then be closer to a word that has perhaps an etymological link to atere, which is the word terreur, terror. And then let's say that atere is substituted for abatu. This gives abatu an added nuance of meaning that it does not have on its own, but does when it's substituted for atere, that being the psychological effect of terror. Atare brings a new meaning insofar as it's a signifier since it contains a phoneme also found in terror. It's not that the word atare actually carries the meaning of terror in its contemporary usage. It is the meaningless coincidence of phonemic similarities whereby new meanings come to be created. Hence why Lacan places priority of the signifier over the signified. At the same time, the new meaning of terror is masked since atere retains its association with another signifier, la terre, referring to the land or the ground, thus carrying forth a meaning attached to abatu, to be brought down or demoralized. Thus the metaphorical substitution of atere for abatu both adds something new and retains something previously established. And this retaining of the old is what helps to mask the new to a certain degree, that it represses it in a certain sense. And so if we're talking about depression here, we might be able to begin to see how the language around one's depression, if described in a way that uses the word atare and was maybe accidentally substituted for abatu, can mask a certain terror. Now, it's at this point I struggle a little bit in my own head as I have to accept that such linguistic analyses seemingly distant from clinical concerns, in fact, has clinical implications. Since it's not how most clinicians are trained to think about the functional language, the preceding analysis by Lacan can seem rather foreign. To appreciate it, we have to come to terms with the fundamental claim at play here which is that the formal aspects of signifiers have a notable influence on the content or meanings attributed to our experiences. Furthermore, we have to also appreciate that the formation of these signifying elements has a dual function of revealing and veiling a truth at the same time, that the use of signifiers cannot be understood in the way Lacan analyzes them without an appreciation of the notion of the unconscious. It's also important to keep in mind that when it comes to clinical considerations, such an analysis is not made in a vacuum, but is done within the larger context of the analysis history, as Lacan himself indicates, to avoid making mistakes in our analysis of the formation of signifiers, it requires ultimately contextualizing the genesis of these formations much further back in the history of the analysis as well as in their family relations. And so part three of this lecture provides a few more clinical examples, including the famous self-analysis made by Freud in The Psychopathology of Everyday Life concerning the name Signorelli. In this example, rather than creating a new signifier such as familiarnaire, there is principally the forgetting of a signifier. Nonetheless, such errors are almost indistinguishable from witticisms, and Lacan seems to analyze it just the same. In the example provided by Freud, he thinks of the name Botticelli and Boltrafio, and he explores why these names come to mind rather than the target word of Signorelli. Through such an analysis, he identifies that the latter half of the name Signorelli is retained, the Eli, and then the first part of it, Signor, was the part forgotten. Now, the unique element that emerges in both names is the phoneme Bo, and this gets connected by Freud to Bosnia-Herzegovina. Trafoy represents another retained element in the name Boltrafio. In Freud's own history, 
Trafio is where he learned that one of his patients had committed suicide due to sexual impotence. Sexual impotence came up in the conversation where Freud had forgotten the name Signorelli, a conversation that entails Freud's interlocutor discussing the Turks of Bosnia-Herzegovina, in which they address their doctor as Herr, Sir, after having been unsuccessfully treated. The signifier Herr itself has some association with death in German. Then there is the repressed Signor, which has similar meanings to the German Herr. Although Signor itself does not carry the same connotation of death as Herr, the painter Signorelli is most known for his frescoes of the Last Judgment, thereby evoking death. It's also notable that the conversation entailed a doctor being unsuccessful in their treatment, which connects to Freud's own failure with his patient, and hence perhaps the immediate impetus for repressing the name Signorelli. As such, we can see how the transformation of signifiers happens at two levels. First, there is the combinatory level where the metonymic object is produced in the deaggregating of the phonemes. Second, there is the substitutive level where in a metaphorical effect is produced, whereby meanings are transferred from signifier to signifier. We can also see how the somewhat wider context of the utterance in Freud's example provides some greater clarity as to the progression of the linguistic analysis itself, though still requiring us to accept the more basic assumption concerning the determinative force of signifiers themselves. Along with liking, sharing, and subscribing, you can financially support this work using the super thanks button below this video. To be an ongoing supporter of this work, I have a Patreon page where I offer video transcripts, unedited materials, and prioritize questions and comments. The link is below. I want to thank the following for already supporting this channel on Patreon. As always, thank you for watching, and until next time, Fecal.